a danger zone where any minute, any time now, uh, his effectiveness will go away and uh, the health of his back plays a role in that. Uh, but uh, for now, I'm happy with him. Very good player. He's going to do well to make this offense go. I'm confident of that. Uh, Magli Ordonez, no problem. Should be great. Uh, Miguel Cabrera, I think, is going to be even better this year than last year. Um, once again, I don't pay a lot to spring training statistics. I don't even know what he did in the spring. And I'm very mindful and cognizant of small sample size. Uh, the times that I've seen or that I saw him, uh, may have been, he may have been at his best. But I've been reading a lot of articles that said he's been hitting well. And the two games I went to, uh, the game, uh, what day of the week is this, Monday? So it must have been Saturday. Uh, the game Saturday and the game Friday, both games he was making solid contact. Even when he was making outs, the ball sounding off of his bat, it was, it, it was crushing everything. Foul balls, fair balls. Uh, he didn't hit any home runs, but he was getting solid hits. This guy is in season form. I'm really confident he could, I'm not going to go so far as to say he's going to put up an MVP type season, but he's going to have a really good year. He's going to do better than last year. We're going to be happy. We're going to get the guy that we traded for, and really I think last year we got that guy after May. Um, we're going to get it for a whole year this year. I'm really excited about Miguel Cabrera, and I think uh, uh, Tiger fans haven't seen all that this guy is capable of. We have a Hall of Famer on this team. And I'm really glad the Tigers traded for and extended him before the recession. Because um, I don't know if he gets a year contract if we had it to do over today. But we don't. So <laughs> I'm really happy about Cabrera. I love this guy. Um, Carlos Guillen, injury prone. He's going to miss time this year. But when he's in the lineup, I, I'm not worried about him. He's going to perform. Uh, Marcus Timms is going to be the DH. I'm not going to say that I was happy that they got rid of Gary Sheffield because I'm not. I think he still, I think he should have been given the opportunity to perform in April, possibly or potentially fail. Um, and, you know, for the Tigers to do what they were going to do in May. At the same time, I'm not particularly angry that they're rid of him either. Um, and this opens the door for Marcus Timms to get the opportunity I think he's deserved for the last few years. Uh, I guess we'll see once and for all if I was right. Um, he's a good guy to have there. I'm sure they're going to have Jeff Larish in that spot, and they're probably going to uh, rotate guys in the DH spot uh, like Guillen. In fact, he's starting at DH tonight on opening day. Uh, and like Magli Ordonez, some of their older players. Um, you may even see Cabrera there if he suffers a minor injury, although... Uh, while well, a lot is made about his so-called conditioning problems, so the guy has not missed very many games in his entire career. He's played a ton of games. Uh, he played a ton of games last year. I think he only missed two or three. Um, so I'm not really worried about that, but if he suffers a minor injury, we might see him there. Um, so, But Marcus Thames, I think, is going to get a lot of at-bats. I'm excited to see what will happen. And even if he fails, for me, I'll feel better knowing that he couldn't make it having seen it from my own eyes uh, than hearing Jim Leland tell me because I don't really trust that very much. Um, I'm pretty confident about Gerald Laird's ability to at least match what Ivan Rodriguez was doing. Um, he'll take more pitches, that's for sure. Um, Laird uh, potentially could even provide more than what Rodriguez was going to provide for us this year. Um, I think that one thing, one question mark for him is he has not proven the ability to handle a full workload of catching over a full season, 110, 120 games. Um, he's proven in spots that he could be pretty good and effective. This year we'll see. Um, we do have Dusty Ryan in the minor leagues. I'm confident in, in his abilities. Um, they, uh, they have Alex Avila in the minor leagues. Uh, right now he's in the lower minors. I wouldn't expect him to be on the Tigers now. Uh, but he seems to be moving pretty fast. He's a guy to keep an eye out on. And who knows, maybe by, you know, July or August, he's performing in a way that the Tigers might look at it. Is it something I expect? No. But, I mean, no, with Ryan and Avila, we have two potential options in case Laird can't pick up the slack. Um, Matt Trainer's definitely not a full-time starting catcher. Um, they may, I doubt it, but they may look into moving Brandon Inge there. 
they may make a move, trade some of their uh, surplus minor league relief help. Who knows, you'll never know how the season goes. Right now we're on day one. Gerald Laird, though, I'm happy with right now. Um, Brandon Inge, I prefer to see him in a reserve role. Um, he certainly would not prefer to be in a reserve role. or um, And I would prefer to see him as their primary reserve player, uh, playing basically to spell people periodically throughout the week, playing five days you know, out of seven, and playing left field for Guillen one day, right field for Donez, third base for whoever the Tigers would have acquired had they not gone in the season with him as a starter. Um, for my money, it should have been Joe Creedy, but it's gone. what's done is done. Now he's with the Twins. He'll kill the Tigers for them, too. Um, that's the backup catcher. Um, but that's not the role they've chosen. He's going to be the starting third baseman. I am excited to see his exceptional defense at third base. I think there's a lot talked about in the media about his great defense, and they still underrate him. This guy is great. He's going to be exciting. Uh, he's going to make the pitchers better. ERAs are going to improve with uh, Granderson on the team and Inge and Adam Everett on the left side. Uh, that infield defense, I think, is great. I think Cabrera is going to take a big step forward. I think a lot of guys are underrating what he's capable of. I think he's going to be uh, a talent at first base. Um, and Inge is going to be the center of that. Uh, he and Everett are going to be great over there on the left side. So even though I prefer to see him as a backup, I'm cool essentially with him being uh, the starting third baseman. Um, I like to see him do a little better offensively than last year, but uh, that's why they play the games. Uh, Adam Everett, black hole on offense, uh, golden goose on defense, has had some injury problems. Got hurt in spring training, but it wasn't severe. He's going to start opening day, uh, uh, from what I hear, pain-free. Um, I hope he stays healthy because uh, we don't have a lot. We don't have a lot of shortstop help uh, beyond them. I'm cool with him being on the team. I, we have enough offense to carry his bat. Um, he's going to be exciting at shortstop, much better than the um, that Edgar Renteria statue they had last year. Um, on the bench, I really like the trade for Josh Anderson. Uh, Rudy Darrow wasn't going to do anything for the Tigers. He may be effective for the Braves. Who knows? Who cares? Josh Anderson provides assets to this team that they need it and that they can utilize. He's a fast guy. He's a left-handed bat. He hits right-handed pitching well. He did in the minors and in his brief time in the majors. He has. Um, I don't believe he's a starting caliber player. Um, I'm disturbed that he's starting opening day. The rationale for him starting I find to be acceptable, but he's the kind of player I feel that major league managers tend to fall in love with and start more than they should be starting. Jim Leland has done this consistently. Uh, Nafi Perez, most notably, um, he gave Craig Monroe way too much time. Uh, he, they, they, they fall in love with these guys and can't take them out of the lineup. Josh Anderson fits the profile of these guys, and he worries me for that reason. I don't want to see him overused, but I like the trade. I like having him on the team. I think he does have assets that they can use. There are times when it's good for him to start. The rationale given for him starting tonight was a good one, um, in my opinion. Uh, he should get starts against certain right-handed pitchers. Um, he'll be a great defensive replacement, pinch runner, um, I really like this guy and what he can bring to the team if utilized properly. I'm not, uh, I don't trust Jim Leland very much. I'm not a huge Leland guy to use him properly, but we'll see. I think Leland did a good job with the team last year. I'm in the minority in that, and um, we'll see what he does. Ramon Santiago will not do what he did last year, but he should be adequate as a backup middle infielder and uh, third baseman. Uh, Jeff Larish should, should, should uh, provide some left-handed power off the bench, uh, play some first base, third base backup. Uh, I don't know how his glove profiles at third base. I've heard not very well. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of it for myself. Pretty good defensive first baseman. Uh, I'd like to see him develop more from being the slap hitter he was in the major leagues last year to more of the power hitter he was in college and coming up through the minor leagues. Hopefully we'll see that this year. Um, he could be a really good asset to the bench if he provides that. And uh, Matt Trainer, backup catcher. What do you expect?